Hey! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about accessibility identifiers for dynamic element in your iOS application and how to set them up programmatically. Stick around, it's going to be interesting. Well, hello there. And in this video, like I promised, we're going to talk about accessibility identifiers for dynamic elements on your application. But before we get into it, welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and make sure that you click that bell notification button so you get notifications every time I post a new video. My name is Eugene and uh, I talk about software development and software quality and how to make your product better, how to make yourself better, and how to get the job that you really want. So stay tuned and it's going to be interesting. I post new videos all the time. So let's talk about identifiers. In my previous video, I was talking about how to set up static ID accessibility identifiers for like, let's say those buttons. So these buttons are like, they're not really going anywhere. They will be there. It's, it's pretty static elements on my application. So it's pretty safe to provide uh, unique identifiers, uh, static unique identifiers manually. However, if you look at the pictures here, uh, I, if I swipe uh, right and swipe uh, left, uh, and swipe left and swipe right, uh, so they will change and I need to find a reliable way to identify them. So as of right now, I don't really have a reliable way to identify them and if i go to my xui test and then i would like to record my actions for those elements so i won't be able to find them reliably so the query is very long and it's not really um it's not really testable as of right now of course i can probably use them but again it's not reliable and if for example if uh, the uh, sequence of the pictures is changing, I can really say reliably that I grabbed that particular picture or not. So it's not really good and then it's not really testable. How do we provide, how do, how do we make more testable and how do we provide more accessibility identifiers for those uh, pictures? So uh, before I die, I, before I provide you like the exact solution, I am gonna talk about architecture, how my app. So like this is my, this is my little sample app that I'm working on right now. So as I said, I'm building my own app, and I'm just trying to do different things and experiment with different things. Um, accessibility is one of them, so that's that's why. Um, so um, here you see this cart and uh, I generate this cart in my cart view. So this is the cart view and this is how, uh, this is how it gets generated. And uh, to render my, uh, uh, this is uh, to set up and render my cart view model correctly, I use this struct that will take image name, attribute, uh, attributed string, and text alignment. So, and also, um, I have models for that will take those, uh, that will um, render those uh, card views accordingly. And for those models, I have appropriate. I, I have I have appropriate um, um, functions or methods to do that. So. Let's go back to my cart view. So because this is where I'm going to set up my accessibility identifiers. So and let me just uh, uncomment this uh, this bit of code. So um, uh, informational label accessibility accessibility identifier an identifier is text. So um, a label is uh, infor informational label is right here. So it's a text label on your UI view, and accessibility identifier for the UI view for the cart view for like the whole thing is cart view model. 
uh, and it's gonna it's gonna take image names. So each and every image in my application has a unique name, or uh, and the name is specific for that picture. And um, my accessibility identifier will find it. Like my accessibility identifier will generate will be generated based on that image name. So if that it, and every picture has a name and it's going to be accessibility identifier for that view. So let me run um, XUI test record and playback uh, one more time. So, oh, um, and nothing happened because I didn't run my code. I didn't build my I need to build my project, but like you see, like before accessibility identifier, so the query is pretty large and not really testable. But if we do it right now, so it should work. So if we do it right now, the query is a lot uh, more concise and a lot. Uh, it's easier to identify those elements because we we provided accessibility ID for those elements. And if uh, you want to see like for accessibility IDs or IDs for other pictures, so this is the name of the picture. And even if a user, let's say, provided a um, picture from their uh, smartphone or iPhone, it's not a problem because the name is not too large and it's, it's going to be unidentifiable. So. Uh, this is a quick solution how to provide your accessibility identifiers for your project for your dynamic uh, elements. So I think the secret in, um, for that you may wonder like well for your project you have that model and like for your particular project that you are working you may not have um, uh, you may not have the architecture. So how do you do that? I think um, when it comes to dynamic accessibility identifiers, the best way to generate them is programmatically. And to generate them programmatically, you have to dive a little bit deeper into your code and see how you render that particular um, element on your application, how you, uh, how you generate that picture, how do you generate that view, how do you um, populate those names and uh, like things like that? So if you know about it, your accessibility identifiers will be more will, will be more reliable because they will be there, and your test your UI test won't be as brittle. So I hope this information helps and um, is helpful for you as well. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, if you work on accessibility and testability let me know what you do to make your app more testable and more accessible and leave me um, your thoughts and your um, what, what you do with your app in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!